So today we're we'll taking a look at a company known as Optimal Techs. Uh, they are just a lesser known gaming PC company. And I just kind of want to sit down and take a look at their value propositions for most of their computers. Now they do have two things going for them. They have uh, pre built as well as you can customize your own gaming PC. Now at the time of recording, you cannot customize your own gaming PC. It says that they are out of stock. So today we can't really take a look at it, but we'll be taking a look at their pre built So guys, before we do end up getting into the video, make sure that if you guys watch the video through uh, and you end up enjoying it and found it informative, please make sure to leave a like. It really helps me out as a content creator, uh, as well if you just like the content on the channel, make sure to leave a subscribe and uh, we'll be making more content so you guys can watch it. Let's get into the video. So the first rebuild that we're going to be taking a look at, I think is at a pretty decent price point. It's at $680. Uh, so we'll, we'll pretty much look at that as a $700 gaming PC. If you guys know me, I don't really like making PC part picker lists when it comes to comparing a desktop's value because a lot of times desktops are usually going to be more expensive. So usually when we're comparing it, we kind of want to keep some things the same. Uh, so I usually compare it to another company that is also selling game PCs that are around the same price point. So today we're going to be taking a look at a company known as VRLA Tech. Uh, I've done numerous videos on them. I'll leave a card up here if you guys want to go and check them out. So the PC that we're going to be comparing it against today is going to be a $600 PC. It's called their Rogue, uh, and we are going to be including an SSD upgrade. Uh, so it gets kind of closer to how much this thing costs. So in terms of specs, we're getting a Ryzen 5 1600. This is a six core, 12 thread processor. It's a pretty decent processor. It's actually a processor that I use, and I've been loving it for the years that I've been having it. Uh, I'll probably be upgrading here in a little bit because it's a little bit slower on that single thread performance. But other than that, it's great in just multi-core performance like editing videos and all that other kind of stuff. And then for our motherboard, it looks like we're getting a Gigabyte B450M. Pretty decent motherboards. Uh, I've, I've liked Gigabyte stuff. Not bad. Uh, and then we got a RX 570. It should be an amazing card for 1080p gaming. You really shouldn't have a problem with it. And then for our RAM, we've got 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 3200 megahertz RAM. This is also great because Ryzen really needs that higher memory speeds in order to perform at its peak. Uh, and 3200 megahertz should be enough for it to be able to do all that. Now for storage, we only have a 500 gigabyte SSD as our boot drive. Should be fast, but you might not be able to store a whole lot of games and just files on it in general. Again. 500 gigabytes is on the lower end. If you look at a game like Modern Warfare, it's close to half of that size. Um, so, I mean, you're not going to have a whole lot of space. I would definitely recommend getting some sort of other storage option. And so I would really recommend going for a little bit more storage when it comes to it. Now, I did charge $50 more for a one terabyte hard drive, which uh, is a little bit more pricey than what a real one terabyte hard drive costs. But again, I guess that's somewhat of the labor fee also going into that. So you really shouldn't have to worry about that too much. Uh, in terms of the upgrades, they aren't that bad. Um, I mean, the RGB case fans, I might not want to get those if I were you. Uh, but if RGB is a big thing, then I guess you could spend uh, the extra $50 on that as well. Now, so for the configuration that I would recommend, Recommend. It's we'll round up to $750. And I actually think that's a pretty decent gaming PC. Should be able to game, content, create, maybe stream at like uh, 720p if you just make sure you get your settings right in OBS. So let's compare it to our VRLA Tech Rogue. So, in terms of our processor, you get the choice between a 3200G or a Core i3-9100F. I would definitely go with the 3200G. So, overall, these processors are going to have worse multi core uh, performance over the 1600 just because they have less cores and they are non hyper threaded, but they are going to beat them out in single core performance, uh, which is mostly what games rely on. Uh, but it really shouldn't be that big of a factor when you're at this low of a price point because GPU bottlenecks uh, really don't occur until you start to get into higher end GPUs. And we're really only here with a RX 570. So you really shouldn't have a problem with any sort of GPU bottleneck while you're in game. So in terms of our motherboard choice, it's a much worse motherboard. It's a cheaper end motherboard. Now you can still upgrade it to pretty decent uh, and pretty relevant CPUs later on down the line. And it's the same thing with this motherboard, except you're actually going to have more upgrade ability uh, with this Gigabyte B450M instead of this MSI A320M. So if that's a big factor for you, upgradability, definitely going with a nicer motherboard is going to be a better option. Now in terms of power supplies, we're basically on par with each other, 500 watt 80 plus. Definitely not a bad power supply, should be able 
able to do what you need to do. And they're both rocking the stock coolers on both of the machines. And they've got the same memory capacity, same RAM, and I guess they are including this RGB strip that's part of the case. I'm not 100% sure where they have that in the spec list. But in terms of value, I really don't think that this is a bad computer. Now, compared to the VR LA Tech Rogue, I mean, you might not be getting the best price to performance, but I would probably assume that if you're getting up to a Ryzen 5 1600 and you're going with a bunch of different stuff, as well the case on the other one is a good bit better than what they have here. Some people might find that a little bit more of a value interest for them than what a computer off here might offer. Both though are actually pretty decent value propositions. I usually recommend the Rogue for most people who are looking for a gaming PC. Uh, and this one really isn't that bad. I don't think it's terrible value. Uh, so yeah. So the one thing that a lot of sites do, and again, I guess the site is guilty of it as well, is once you start to get into the high end, your value kind of starts to diminish. So we actually have some pretty nice stuff. We've got a Fantax P350X, a very nice case, uh, a Ryzen 7 3800XT, a really nice CPU. It's gonna have amazing single core performance, uh, as well as multi-core performance, it's going to be amazing. We've got an RTX 2060 Super, 16 gigs of DDR4, 3600 megahertz RAM. Getting very fast RAM, it's going to be great for that CPU. And then for our storage, we only have a 1 terabyte SSD. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this is a typo or not, but they have the Wraith Stealth RGB cooler on here. Now, the Wraith Stealth, uh, for those of you who don't know, is actually the model uh, that is the smallest one. They don't actually have a Wraith Stealth RGB cooler. The only two coolers that they have ever made that has RGB in it is the Wraith Prism and the Wraith Spire. Uh, the Wraith Stealth does actually not come in an RGB configuration, so I assume they mean uh, the Wraith Prism, and it's a pretty okay cooler. I mean, it looks great, but that's what I would assume that they mean. If they are using a Wraith Stealth, it's definitely not going to be able to cool this chip. The 3800 XT is fairly high uh, TDP chip, and I definitely don't think the Wraith Stealth is going to be able to cool it. But other than that, it goes for $1,700, and I think that is fairly expensive. Uh, for a PC of this caliber. Now, the reason why I say this is mostly just because of the graphics card. I don't know why it's a trend, uh, but for some reason, companies are putting in higher end CPUs than their graphics cards, which it should kind of be the other way around. Uh, I would much rather have a Ryzen 5 like 3600 in here with an RTX 2070 Super. I don't think a whole lot of people need a Ryzen 7 3800 XT uh, when it comes to just gaming. You're not really going to have any bottlenecks when it comes to this chip. Uh, and same thing with the Ryzen 5 3600. You're really not going to have any bottlenecks on that when paired with like a card like a 2070 Super. And I'm pretty sure that they just do this for... Um, margins just to increase margins because they probably get better margins on their CPUs than they do on their GPUs so they go with lower end GPUs and just throw in a fairly nice CPU uh, to kind of add into that part value. Now the reason why I say that this is not particularly good value is because when you look at a company like VRLA Tech and they have a PC like their Titan uh, it really does kind of blow out this kind of PC in terms of value. Now, if you guys want to have points for cases, yes, the Fantax P350X is a much nicer case than the one that VRLA Tech is using. Uh, but for a lot of people, if you're not building in the case, it really doesn't matter as long as it just comes together right. And I completely understand that. Usually, people who are buying really nice cases are the people who are building in it because it makes it easier to cable manage uh, and just put everything together. But if you you're just buying the PC, the case shouldn't really matter to you, I guess, other than looks and uh, IO on the front panel. So other than that, I think this is a pretty good looking PC case. I don't think it looks bad. But in terms of specs, we're really kind of just destroying what these guys have. So for our processor, it's a 3800 XT compared to a 3700X. Literally the only difference between these two processors is just higher clocks. Uh, you can get roughly the same performance of a 3800 XT. Uh, if you overclock this thing to a fairly good degree. Again, that also depends on how good of a Ryzen 7 3700X you are getting. Uh, and I'd probably just keep it on base. I mean, you're really not going to need to overclock this thing that much because you're still going to get great performance on it. Now, when the things start to get apart, uh, this only comes with a 250 gig SSD 
and you can't upgrade it, which I think is extremely dumb. I feel like you should be able to go with a one terabyte SSD and it's just not in the upgrade section. And I know storage is a huge thing for a lot of people. I know and I really think that VRLA tech should add more options for upgrading other components like the motherboard and the SSD. And for power supplies, they're close to being the same thing. It's a 650 watt, 80 plus. Uh, I assume it's a bronze power supply. If it's not, uh, it's kind of disappointing. But this one is a 700 watt, 80 plus bronze. So I guess this is a nicer power supply than what we've got on here. And then for our graphics card, we've got a 2070 Super, which is uh, really going to be outperforming this 2060 Super by a good margin. And if you guys haven't already looked, I mean, the price point for this is a good bit lower than what we've got here. So yeah, that's really all I've got to say about this company. It's not amazing, not terrible. Um, they've got decent parts for what they're offering. Higher end stuff kind of gets a little bit further away. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you guys ended up liking it, please leave a like. It really helps me out. If you guys want any tech help, uh, you guys can go join the Discord down in the description. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.